Aloha, aloha ya kohala, kai na wana mauna. Aloha, aloha e kai na waka u. Aloha kako apau, and welcome to the Conservation Conference. Aloha, welcome to the 15th annual Hawaii. Aloha, welcome to the 15th annual Hawaii Conservation Conference. Um, I'm Christopher Paddock, the program coordinator of the Hawaii Conservation Alliance, and without further ado, I would like to introduce to you the director of um, the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, the Pacific Islands Ecosystem Research Center, who is uh, the chairman of the Alliance for uh, 2007, and that is, um, uh, goodness, <laughs> uh, uh, Loyal Meyerhoff, I should look at my notes, and uh, welcome to the stage, Loyal, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, I also um, wanted to welcome you to today's conference. As Chris mentioned, uh, this is the 15th HCC, as we call it, or Hawaii Conservation Conference, that the Hawaii Conservation Alliance has put on. And I want to take a, a couple minutes and talk to you a little bit about what the HCA does. Uh, so you know who to blame, I guess, more than anything else. But just give you an idea as to what the Hawaii Conservation Alliance is. And we're an organization of 15 agencies. And our mission is to promote effective conservation and management of Hawaii's native ecosystems. We do that through, as the screen says, research, training, and outreach. The HCA has grown over time, so it's not been a static organization. And we have added agencies and organizations that contribute to Hawaii conservation um, many times over the last 15 years. This year, we've added five new organizations. And these organizations, all 15 of them, by the way, are in your program uh, brochure. So you can read, out, read up a little bit about each of these agencies. But we have five new ones. And these five new ones are uh, really going to increase the ability of uh, HCA uh, to accomplish its mission and goals. So we have the Department of Land and Natural Resources, uh, Division of Aquatic Resources, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, NOAA's National Marine Sanctuaries Program, the Department of Defense, Army Garrison Hawaii's Natural Resource Program, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Wildlife Refuge System. These agencies give us a, a lot of additional power, if you will, both in the trad traditional terrestrial systems that we're used to working in, but also as we increase emphasis on marine systems and freshwater aquatic and strengthen our ties to uh, Hawaiian communities. So we really want to welcome these agencies. In addition, as Chris mentioned, uh, we have an HCA staff, and that staff is Chris, Marissa Silva, who you've seen around here, and Kendall McCreary. So the HCA goals are to ensure that Hawaii's leaders understand important conservation issues, such as myconia, and focus resources on solving high priority issues. This particular goal we'll get back to later on uh, today, but we would like to see 90% of Hawaii's existing native ecosystems protected by the year 2020. We support the restoration of rare and endangered species and increase research 
on high priority, uh, very high priority conservation issues such as avian diseases that affect Hawaii's very unique bird communities. Or the introduction of ohia rust, which may decimate Hawaii's one of the most important trees in Hawaii. In addition, strengthening the, the goal or the skills of conservation professionals is important, as well as increasing public awareness and involvement in conservation. HCA does that through the <laughs> conservation conference that you're attending today. And I do want to mention that the HCA staff has been very involved in that, as well as an organizing committee that has put a lot of time into preparing this week's conference. About 40 volunteers are out there working for you for this conference, and Pacific Rim Concepts has been helping us put this on as well. So a lot of people have worked on putting together this conference. In addition, the HCA facilitates information exchange in a number of other ways, hosting workshops and forums on key topics like biosecurity or what really is effective conservation. An exchange program amongst conservationists between Hawaii and other Pacific areas, position papers on key topics like ungulate management, and awards to recognize people that are contributing significantly to Hawaiian conservation or organizations that are doing that as well. And many of the awards will be given out this Friday at lunch. Two new things I wanted to mention are that this year, HCA has helped launch a nonprofit foundation to, again, further the goals of HCA. In 2003, we put together a status report on where we were with respect to the conservation of Hawaiian ecosystems and species. We want to institutionalize that so that we can better track our successes and failures. And that I want to talk about very quickly, because in 2008, we hope to really roll this out and give everybody a good picture of where we might be standing with respect to uh, conservation in Hawaii. And that will consist of looking at native biodiversity, ecosystem protection, how we're managing those ecosystems, as well as threat management, biosecurity of our borders, restoration of degraded systems, constituency building, um, and other issues. Two of the really key aspects of this report will be looking at species, Hawaii's unique species, and how well we're protecting them. So to do that, we want to make sure that we know what we have. So in conjunction with the Hawaii Biological Survey, Fish and Wildlife Service, NOAA, and others, we hope to track how many species we have in Hawaii in different taxonomic groups, how many are extinct, endangered, and how many non-native alien species we have. This is a 2007 snapshot. It'll be repeated in 2008. We want to go further than that, and for selected groups that we can get more information on, look at really which are the priority species or the species that are most at risk of being lost. If we look at certain plant or certain taxonomic groups, like in this case Hawaiian plants, we see that we have 110 species that we think are extinct. Five species that are no longer in the wild, they're only in captivity. 16 species that we know of only a single individual remaining in the wild and about 90 species that have less than 20. These are daunting numbers if you're a conservation biologist, a land manager trying to protect these species and keep them from going extinct. If you look at Hawaii's birds, 35 species in the last 200 years have gone extinct. One is only in captivity, the Hawaiian crow, a la la. Two have less than 500 individuals remaining, and four more have less than 1,000. Since the 2003 report, we've lost species, the po'ouli. So we would prefer not to do that again. In addition to species, we're looking at ecosystems. Again, one of our key goals at HCA. And that's both terrestrial, marine, and freshwater systems. If we look at how much we've lost of the original native Hawaiian vegetation, right now for the terrestrial systems, we're sitting at around 46% of Hawaii's land area is still dominated by native plant species. We don't have the numbers yet for marine and aquatic, but by 2008 we hope to have those. If you remember, I talked earlier, we have a goal in HCA of trying to protect 90% of what's left. So we need to figure out how we're doing that and how well we're doing. If we do, a, and we have done, a preliminary analysis looking at what areas are both protected and managed to exclude key threats like ungulates, we find that the number is right now pretty low less than 6% of the Hawaii's native ecosystems are currently in that protected status. This was a concerning figure. So we're 
hoping that by 2008 we'll have been able to spend a lot more time looking at this situation, more detail and more analyses to see just really what the, um, what the situation is. To do that, we'll go back and look at what we think the original vegetation was. These maps are from the Nature Conservancy, Hawaii, before humans, the situation on the Big Island now, and then looking at what's left and seeing how much of that we've actually managed to protect and manage properly. And if you look at this map, the areas that are in red uh, are areas that are not yet protected and managed both. The areas in green uh, are being managed, at least to the point where they're eliminating uh, feral ungulates. And this is just one aspect of what we're going to be looking at, one indicator of effective management. We will repeat this for multiple threats across the islands. Again, looking at Maui Nui, you see the loss of habitat, particularly in the lowland areas, to the current situation. And if you look at the areas that are ungulate-free and also being managed, you see large green blocks, very impressive, actually, for Maui. If we look at Kauai and Oahu, again, we see the characteristic loss of habitat. Here, you have to look a little bit harder to see the green areas where we've managed to um, address some of the key threats. But these are the reasons that we want to put together this report on effective management and biodiversity. So in 2008, look for this, because it should give us a lot of information on what we need to do, um, both with respect to controlling threats, protecting biodiversity, um, and undertaking restoration activities. So with that, I just want to close and say welcome once again. Please check out the HCA website. There's a lot of interesting information on there, including our position papers and uh, information on new news articles that are of interest to Hawaii conservation. So thank you very much, and back to you, Chris. Hakalila <laughs> 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 <laughs>